In today's world, the culture surrounding food has transformed into an intriguing interplay of diverse tastes, culinary trends, and all things gastronomic. Much more so with the unabating development of online technology that continues to pave the way for the emergence of new interests, wants, and needs surrounding food. As such, you will find that many of our food-related experiences can be seen connected to the rise of technology. Everywhere on the internet, food videos, food recipes, food tutorials, and food vlogs abound. There are eating broadcasts, virtual cooking classes, online food shopping and delivery, and health and nutrition apps. Aside from this, in the field of science and technology, we see innovations on agriculture, biotechnology, and genetic engineering. We also see this in our food production and manufacturing processes. The increasing population creates an exponentially growing demand for food and we want it to be quick and instant, but also safe, nutritious, delicious, and enjoyable. This new world of food, however, creates new problems and challenges to our morality. And because these technological advancements will continue to shape our understanding of and relationships with food, it is important to look into its ethical dimensions and engage in the active reflection of our food choices and eating habits. Through the philosophy of food and food ethics, we can reflect on our food-related values, food-related intentions, and inquire into our food-related rights, food obligations the moral implications of our actions, and the sociopolitical aspects of our food systems. Looking inwardly is an important first step for better awareness of how food relates to our moral agency. Revisiting our food choices and eating habits can lead us to better self-understanding, which, in turn, paves the way for a clearer and more genuine apprehension of the moral issues surrounding food. By underlining what values and beliefs govern our actions and whether they are consistent with our goal of living a good life. Have you ever asked yourself, why you eat the food you eat? For some, this may appear as a pointless inquiry with the more urgent food problems that deserve our attention. Why talk about food choices and eating habits when there are real problems on hunger and sustainability? But what our discussion today will emphasize is that our self-understanding is pivotal to generating answers and proposing solutions to these food problems. If one does not know where they stand in relation to these current food issues, how can one develop answers and offer solutions which they deem good and sustainable? How can one take positions in our food discussions, if one lacks the critical awareness of their own food values and biases, our eating habits and food choices reveal a lot of things about us. Our deep-seated beliefs, our culture and our heritage, our religion, our moral and political commitments, and even our self-image. Yet, 
whether our food-related decisions are results of our active and sustained reflection of the intentions we have, the actions we take, and the consequences of our choices is a different matter that is often neglected. Some key factors about our food choices and eating habits are taste, social environment, cultural influences, emotional and psychological states, economic factors, access and availability, food knowledge and health concerns, convenience, and media and advertising. But when we encounter food, do we inquire into these aspects? Do we explore how our individual choices affect the rest of the world? Encountering food merely out of a force of habit and routine prevents us from the full exercise of our autonomy and moral agency, from taking ownership of our food lives. Consider these questions. When you go to a new restaurant and order the best sellers on the list, is it because of your genuine curiosity of the food? Or is it because of your desire to be in the know of the latest food trends? If you refuse to eat meat such as pork or beef, is it because of your genuine commitment to the teachings of our religion? Or is it less because of belief and more because of habit? If you choose water over soda, is it because you really like water? Or is it because it's just a healthier choice? If you are a vegetarian because of animal welfare and environmental issues, would you still refuse to eat meat if it were raised sustainably through small-scale, cruelty-free community farming practices? Of course, such questions may not always reveal anything life-changing. But further contemplation of our choices and preferences can lead us to realize our inconsistencies. In the pursuit of a healthy lifestyle, for instance, mindful eating is necessary. One must consciously strive to get rid of their unhealthy food choices and eating patterns, especially when they have enough resources to actualize these goals. One who is resolved in becoming healthier must then engage in food choices and practices aligned with mindful eating. It would be discordant to say one is resolved in becoming healthier while not paying attention to what and how much they are eating. If a person always leaves food on their plate, it surely says something about their stand on food waste. That person may be unaware that they are wasting food and resources and its impact to the world. And if that person is well aware of it, then they may not simply care if they were wasting food. However, if one actively joins movements and organizations that lobby against food waste while also leaving food on their plates or throwing food items they simply do not like, then there is something amiss. Similarly, if a person thinks eating meat is acceptable and justifiable, it says something about how they view animals. It tells whether or not that person is an animal rights activist, an animal welfare activist, or neither. But if one vehemently argues that the life of animals is as important as human life, and that they must not be used to human advantage, yet 
eat meat on a daily basis or invest in meat production in the agribusiness industry, then there is a clear inconsistency between belief and practice. In the same way, if a person advocates for a healthy intercultural dialogue and interdependence among nations for food access and sustainability, yet finds it reasonable to achieve progress at the expense of marginalized groups and indigenous knowledge and methodologies, there are irreconcilable principles at play. Such similar inconsistencies reflect the clash between our values and our decisions. And without contemplating on our beliefs and the respective actions associated with them, it is most likely that we will fail to recognize and realize such inconsistencies. It is through our encounter with food and our contemplation of the food we eat that we come to understand ourselves more, thus leading us to have a clearer grasp of our beliefs in relation to our actions. Now, how does this help us in our apprehension of the issues surrounding food? Well, because food allows us to have a better understanding of ourselves, we are at a good position to forward claims and arguments for whatever cause we aim to promote, since we now have a firmer grasp of our choices, our reasons for them, and their implications. For how do we solve, for instance, problems and issues on food justice and sustainability if we do not understand our food values, principles, and choices in relation to society? And more importantly, how do we engage in critical discourse and community building if we do not see the impact of our choices and habits? Our moral agency is enabled and strengthened by our self-understanding. In food ethics, we can attain self-understanding through our reflective encounters with food, such that when we speak and partake in issues that go beyond our own individuality, it occurs within the conditions of our genuine knowing of what we are talking about and what we are doing. This helps us avoid dissonance in our beliefs and actions, such that what we say correspond with what we believe in and with what we do. And if by chance we realize that we are guilty of dissonance, through our assessment of our food choices and eating habits, well, we could rethink our diets or rethink our beliefs and commitments. Either way, it is the fruit of our active reflection and critical inquiry. The journey towards a more ethical food system starts with every individual. The moral agent who understands that food choices are powerful expressions of our values towards food justice, food sustainability, overall social welfare, for us and for the future generations. By raising our awareness about the ethical dimensions of our food choices and eating habits, we empower ourselves and others as well to make informed, rational food decisions.